Hello and welcome to Region Locked. Ah, China. There's nothing quite like the land of flagrant copyright infringement, bootleg products and mass-produced tat. As many of you know, China has been a difficult market for Nintendo to break into. They've made several attempts over the centuries to penetrate the market, with the likes of iQ, a company set up exclusively for localization purposes, creating consoles such as the iQ Player, a controller which operated as a sort of plug-and-play Nintendo 64. More recently, the company has found some success by simply keeping their consoles as they are, and just rebranding them in the region, though with significantly downsized libraries compared to the rest of the world. The Nintendo Wii was of course one of Nintendo's most successful consoles to date, and with it came a hugely respected library of first-party titles which were completely unavailable within mainland China. That was until a partnership was formed alongside Nvidia to bring Wii titles to the region through emulation on the Nvidia Shield console. This partnership gave Chinese locals the ability to play Super Mario Galaxy for the first time at the start of 2018. But if they wanted a watered-down bootleg rip-off version of the game, they could have simply downloaded the PC game we're covering today, Doola Doobie Star. Doola Doobie Star was released in 2008 and was published by Fanta Wild, an amusement park company which at the time of this video operates 21 different parks across China and even one in Iran, as well as 10 more locations under construction. For a time, many of the theme parks shared a mascot in Doola Doobie, a relatively generic and unassuming blue dinosaur. As one would probably expect, the game's plot isn't exactly an Oscar award-winning narrative. The story involves Doola Doobie setting out to rescue his sister, Doola Dooney, a similar looking dinosaur though with additional eyelashes and with pink skin rather than blue. The game takes Doola Doobie through a total of five different galaxies, each made up of multiple planets and stages, fighting a range of bosses with varying degrees of originality. If you've ever played Super Mario Galaxy, you will already have a pretty solid understanding of how this game plays. One major contrast to Mario Galaxy, however, is that Doola Doobie moves significantly slower than Mario, and is way more frustrating to control. The player can simply move around using the WASD keys, rotate the camera 90 degrees with Q and E, or slowly spin the camera using the mouse's scroll wheel. Attacks are performed with a left mouse click, while the right mouse button is used to jump or can be clicked twice to double jump. By jumping and hitting the spacebar, a ground pound can be performed. This is the entire extent of the player's control, with Doola Doobie moving more like Croc than an acrobatic Italian plumber. The player must navigate stages made up of small planets, breaking tiles or defeating enemies in order to progress. Unlike Mario Galaxy, the player's cursor on screen is almost entirely pointless save for menu navigation, unlike the Wii game's ability to shoot star bits. Despite this, for some reason, Phantom Wild also felt that the game's cursor should be Mario's glove. We're not joking, it is literally just Mario's glove pointer from Mario Paint. When we mentioned before how this game is a clear-cut copy of Mario Galaxy, it doesn't quite provide an explanation of just how much plagiarism takes place within this title, nor the level of lazy design that the player is subjected to. Throughout Doola Doobie's adventure, he will encounter the exact same locations multiple times. Doola Doobie may also not be a real dinosaur, as he sounds suspiciously like Klonoa, having his exact same voice lines from the PlayStation 1 classic Klonoa Door to Phantom Isle while jumping, attacking, or getting hurt. It isn't just sound effects which are entirely lifted. A game's soundtrack is usually a way of giving more depth to a title's themes, but these two have been stolen from the likes of Klonoa with Tower of Balu. The game's first boss is accompanied by the track Cross Sword from Princess Crown, And believe it or not, the game's overworld theme is simply the thinking music featured in the US game show Jeopardy. There's even a track stolen from the Studio Ghibli film, Ponyo. With Doola Doobie Star's world map, inaccessible levels are represented with question mark boxes almost exactly the same as those found in Super Mario Galaxy. As we briefly mentioned before, some of the game's bosses aren't exactly unique in their design either. Again taking inspiration from Mario Galaxy, copies of Dino Piranha and Kamek are on full show, with many others similarly appearing as slightly off-brand Mario characters. 
It's definitely worth noting that Super Mario Galaxy released in 2007, meaning that it had taken the game's production team only a single year to create this entire game. To be frank, this level of plagiarism shouldn't be surprising when you look at other games by the same developer, Shenzhen Huaqiang Game Software Company. Some examples are Egypt Quest, which is a blatant ripoff of PopCap Zuma, even down to the aesthetic. Another example from their software library is the amazingly titled Ding Dang Peen, a Pac-Man clone with elements from rock, paper and scissors thrown in. There isn't a whole lot more to talk about regarding Doola Doobie Star specifically, but by looking at other information, there is a lot more to digest on how this title came to be, and why you've never heard of it. At one stage, Doola Doobie took on the starring role as Fanta Wild's mascot within their amusement parks, though his prominence seems to have waned over the years. Fanta Wild produces many different kids' movies and series, and at the time of creating this video, it seems they are more heavily promoting their latest successful franchise, The Boonie Bears. The company is even working now to inject The Clangers into the Chinese market, a children's series which saw huge popularity within the UK during the 1970s, with a small presence even today. The mascot also appears as the main character of his own animated show, Doola Doobie Global Adventures, and even has his own theme tune. As well as the previously mentioned TV show, countless Doola Doobie products have been created over the years, including the obvious plush toys, and also stage shows, comic books, animated shorts, music, and many more. The game was made available as a downloadable title, and was released for free on the company's website. It was made entirely as a promotion for Fanta Wild, noticeable from the always on-screen ads for the company and their parks in the bottom left corner. It was taken offline sometime in 2009, one year after being made available. The reason for the game's disappearance has never been made public, but the game gaining a small amount of notoriety online may have been a participant in the decision. Nintendo was, at the time, unable to take full advantage of the Chinese market due to the Chinese console ban that had been put in place in June of 2000. That said, as a foreign company, Nintendo's ability to confront the title's plagiarism within a Chinese legal battle would have been difficult, as the country has some very strange laws surrounding international cases. The only product Nintendo had to offer to the Chinese market during this time was the IQ player, with no way for anybody in the country to have been given access to Mario Galaxy legitimately. It's possible that Fanta Wild decided to simply cut their losses on the game, as the risks it posed would have very much outweighed any benefits it offered from a marketing standpoint, and the game's reputation could have potentially put a stain on an existing, well-established and highly respected company, as well as their lineup of amusement parks, including their adored, lovable children's cartoon character. This is what makes this title stand out as particularly unusual. Fanta Wild can be considered on par with an earlier era of Disney, operating large theme parks branded after their creations, creating multiple films and series of children's characters. Their logo even has some similarities to Disney, with the use of a magical castle to draw in an audience. With this in mind, consider how it would appear for a younger Disney getting involved in the publication of video games. And the only video games under their belt are merely minor alterations to already existing and mass-marketed games outside of the United States. Usually on Region Locked, this is the point in which we tell you all of the sad reasons that the game in question wasn't localised outside of its native region, but with everything already demonstrated, we're sure many of you have come to the same conclusions as us. Doola Doobie Star was created to promote a range of amusement parks across China, so its purpose would be completely lost outside of the region. And not only that, but had Fanta Wild attempted to publish the game for any other region, they would have undoubtedly faced a huge legal battle over the extreme volume of plagiarism found throughout the title. Nintendo taking action against this sort of thing isn't just speculation on our part. The company has a long history of taking legal action against those that infringe on their copyright, such as with the 1992 case Atari Games Corp vs Nintendo of America Incorporated. In this case, Nintendo had designed a lockout system to prevent unauthorised games running on the NES. Atari later reverse-engineered this lockout system by referencing materials Nintendo had sent them, allowing Atari to bypass Nintendo and licensing deals. Nintendo successfully sued Atari for the unlawful infringement on their copyrighted chips. All in all, we wouldn't consider this one to be a particularly grave loss. Either way, you can download it yourself by going to the link in the description of this video. Did you also know that there were several official Pokemon games released for Sega systems exclusively in Japan? Or that Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga was heavily based on a Japanese exclusive game that Alpha Dream had released about two years earlier? For more Region Locked, check out the links on screen. I'm Troy McClure, and you may remember me from such films as The Shortstop Barbershop and The Cat That Fucked Elvis. Thanks to Stuart for coming on the show for this special 200th episode. We've been making Region Locked and Digital Gaming Extra for almost probably like three years now, 
and I just want to say thanks for watching. We enjoy making them. We hope you enjoy watching them. And yeah, here's to the next 200. Someone's gonna. Can you write some region lock games in the comments? Because we made 55 of these. I mean, 56 now, I guess. And, uh, you know, we're desperate. <laughs>